Hey. Hey, you. Can you get me? I guess, even if it tries, being close to the edge as it is, it's still being kept down. Which, okay, how about you? Let's see. One more test. Can you get up that? Nope, you cannot. Okay. Hello, everybody. Rogue Fox here, and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 6. This is episode 13, and I have been doing a lot of work to my base area in between episodes. It seems like I'm always saying that, but this time I have done a lot, and I mean a lot, of work to the base area. Let me go ahead and show you what I've done. The first thing I've done is started working on a farming area for my base area. It's not anything that I'm going to be actually harvesting, but merely for decoration. At least I don't plan on harvesting anything. That is a lot of wheat. But I do have some wheat fields over by my pyramid. But as you may know, I have been going with an ancient Egyptian inspired theme for my base area this season. So naturally, I wanted to incorporate a farming area into my base area. So that is what I've done here. Let me go ahead and quickly show you around. Of course, we have the wheat field. We got some flowers growing up here. And then we have a, what I tried to make is a harvested wheat area. So I have the hay bales here, the remains of the wheat that was there. And then I totally forgot the name of these, but this would be for the farming area. You would grab this. You dip the bucket down into the water, pour it into the trench so you can distribute the water across your farmlands. And then if you had a higher level like this, you would have another one and then you would dip it in, pour it in here, and then distribute it all across your farmland as well. And I do need to add some trenches up here also with some gates to let water in and out. That is a plan that I want to do in the future, but this is what I've got done so far for this area. Also, I took the nether stars that I got over the last couple of episodes and turned them into beacons. So I have a beacon here and a beacon there. And as you can tell, I have done a lot of digging and I guess I should point out the obvious. I completely demolished the village that was here. So this is completely gone. You can kind of see what remains of the village, the sandstone on the ground where the buildings were, all of that there. So I ripped out the whole village just like I said I would, just so I can put in the buildings that I want to. And then I dug down a couple more levels. So this is now at Y69. This was all at Y71. So at this level here, it was just flat all the way across. But I decided it was a good idea to have some depth to my base area. So I'm happy with that. And let me go ahead and show you the last thing that I did in between episodes. Okay, maybe the second to last thing that I've done in between episodes so I decided, and this is not going to be for this episode, it will be for the next one, but I decided to move my nether portal that's inside my desert temple to over here and have a nice decorated garden. So all of this is going to fit within, I believe it's a 21 by 21 area. I have it all designed how I want it to look, but I thought if you're coming out of my portal, I want you to have something nice to look at. And yes, I do have the big pyramid out there, but I thought... What could be better than one big pyramid? I don't know. How about two big pyramids? So I put in a second pyramid, slightly smaller than the other, just to give some height difference in the skyline there. So that way, when, well, the beacon wouldn't be here because it's totally blocking your view. But when you come out of my portal, all you see is, of course, the first pyramid. And then you see the second pyramid out there. And then, of course, once this all gets built up, you would see the rest of the town as well. But having the couple blocks in height, should help kind of look over everything so you can see all of those in the skyline. You'll be able to see the buildings and hopefully the desert temple sticking above the rest of the buildings as well. So that is what I got up to in between episodes. Now you may have seen this as I was showing off the base area and let me tell you what this is about. So for those of you who caught the last episode, Eladrium and I went on a little adventure into the nether where we collected some wither skulls and then I showed Eladrium my quick, easy, safe, and I guess boring way of killing the withers and then after we were done with that we had a little discussion and let me go ahead and show you that clip so i had a question about these trees here these are really really nice trees i oh, definitely i can't build trees like that and uh so for my base area you know i'm in the desert so i was looking to make some palm trees do you happen to know how to make palm trees I have an idea for some palm trees, but I don't know which leaves I need to make them. So um, there is 
I, I've totally forgotten what trees are which trees now. There's a type of tree that is like kind of like really, really browny. I know that narrows it down a lot, but it's kind of <laughs> it kind of looks like a palm tree. And then you can put this um, mud block on it to be the stem because the okay. mud box kind of look like a like a palm tree. Oh, they do. And then just grab yourself some uh, yellow leaves, which I think you could get from acacia trees. And okay. then you can kind of use those for like some yellowing leaves or green. Gotcha. I think with palm trees, the trick is you have to make them like big. Yes. Because if you make them like the these skinny little things here, they I, I don't I don't think they look so great. But if you use mud blocks for the stem of the tree for the stem and the branches and then maybe some of the spruce for like the sweeping arms just a little bit. OK, I think that'll give you a good start. OK, I don't have the blocks on me to show you, though. Oh, OK, gotcha. Yeah, because I made palm trees in the past, just not on a big scale. I made like little tiny ones, but not anything big or extravagant. You know, that would look something like this. There's just enough to kind of get by and, you know, they look like palm trees, but I want to do a little something bigger and better this time around. Okay. Well, here, how about this? I will um, go into one of my creative worlds where I have an infinite number of trees that I just picked from, and I'll see if I can make you a palm tree. And then do you mind if I, like, place a palm tree by your teepee so that you can evaluate, or would you prefer one by your uh, desert? Uh, in the desert would be great. Because that's where they're going to go. So that's what I was going to kind of see. Like, you know, if we could build one or if I guess in this case, if you built one, I kind of have something to base the rest of them off of to, you know, try to do the rest. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't I don't have a specific idea right at this moment other than like using this and oh, jungle wood, jungle wood. If you use this with jungle wood. OK, that's that's the ticket. I that's do. Ticket. Have... But I, don't, but I don't have jungle wood. Do you have jungle wood on you? I do have jungle wood at my base. Okay, if you have jungle wood and mud, let's go. Let, let, yeah, let's just go build it now. Let's go build it now. Okay. As you can see, Eladrium designed some really, really nice trees, and there's just no way that I could design a tree like that. I guess maybe with some time, I could possibly learn to make nice trees like that. And don't get me wrong, I have made palm trees in the past, but I really wanted to see an Eladrium palm tree over in my base area. So thankfully, Eladrium agreed to build a couple palm trees for me in my base area. So this is gonna be the beginning of one, and then the other one is gonna be over here. So that's gonna be very, very nice. It sounds like they're gonna be pretty big palm trees, nice and textured from the sounds of things. I haven't actually seen them. So when he builds them, it's gonna be a surprise to me. So I'm very excited to see that. But I thought it'd be a great addition to the garden area here that I'm trying to build. And like I said, I will get to this in the next episode. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I will let you know that Eladrian will be building some palm trees over here. So that's as much as I'm going to give you. And then you're just going to have to see it all in the next episode. Now that you're all caught up on everything that has happened in between episodes, it's time to head over to the pyramid for today's project, which it's actually not going to be inside the pyramid. It's going to be under it. So let's go ahead and head inside. And oh, yes. I did add some cats to the outside. So for those who saw the episode where I made my three by three door, at the very end, a creeper came in and almost blew the whole thing up. And that is actually not the first time that has happened. So a few of you have suggested placing some cats outside the door. Oh man, I see that back there, cow got loose. I'm gonna have to go, go get that cow in just a second. I don't know why they keep breaking loose. They just randomly do. But I did place a couple cats out here. I grabbed Bucky from my TPs in Spawn Town. And I grab Loki from inside the desert temple there. And that cow was like, haha, look at me, I'm free. What are you going to do about it? So I have cats outside. And fun fact, these are actually my cats. So Bucky is my cat and Loki is my wife's cat. So that is why they have those names. So a little behind the scenes on why they have those names in particular. So let's head inside to the base area. Actually, let's check on the bee farm, see how this is doing. Oh yeah, this is popping out. Whatever update it was, the honey just used to drop straight down, but now it shoots out two blocks, which is why I have this two block gap like you see right here. But for my honey, I'm starting to have a bit of an overflow. So I'm definitely gonna be making candles for the Halloween area, but I'm not gonna need this many candles. And then I start placing everything into a shulker here. So I have my honey blocks and I have my honeycomb blocks. And then you can see I have a full row of honey here. 
So what I'm thinking is probably making a honey shop in the near future. I don't know if anyone has it planned, but if not, I should definitely have enough honey to sell. But to make candles, I am going to need string, which means I need a spider farm. And that's what I'm going to do today is make a spider farm. So there's actually a spawner right, right here. 1835 native 677 but it's down at y native 16 so i have some digging to do now there is a water cavern in the way halfway down so i was looking at it and the safest way to go down there would be right here and i can actually dig straight down i am at the spider spawner level at y negative 18 and there is the spawner right there so what I would like to do is make a 9x9 nine nine room for this because spiders are a little bit bigger than cave spiders. I'm going to need some extra space. So a couple seasons ago, I made a spider farm, and I believe it was a cave spider farm where I was actually able to keep the diamond pattern that they would normally spawn in, drop them down to magma blocks, which will have water on top. The magma blocks and the water will keep that suction of pulling the spiders down so there's no way that they can escape because spiders like to climb up walls. And it makes farms very, very frustrating. But that was successful a couple seasons ago. I'm assuming nothing has changed with that. Fingers crossed because I haven't tested this. So, like I was saying, I'm going to drop the spiders down onto magma blocks with water. They will get stuck to the magma blocks essentially because they're being pulled down the whole time. And taking damage, they will die. And what I want to do is run a hopper minecart to collect all of the loot. And this is why I have the guy down. Because if the theory is correct, with Hopper Minecarts messing up outside of the chunk borders, I should be safe because we have one, two, three, four. This will be the edge of the farm right here, the furthest magma block going this way. And then one, two, three, four, the furthest magma block going out in this direction. So I'll be safe having a nine by nine area and be able to run a Hopper Minecart underneath. And then I can make the collection system somewhere over here this goes back up right behind my bee farm so most likely i will have the loot get dropped off over here and sometime down the road i will make an item elevator that will spit all the items up to the very top inside of the pyramid and go into my collection system or automatic storage system i do need to make that still but for the time being i am going to just let everything run down this way so that is the plan now it's time to start digging the magma block floor is in place, so that is all set up, and I plan on having a glass window here just to be able to watch everything, and I'll need to dig all this out, but I just want to get this farm up and running, so let me hop in here and start placing down my water sources. So, uh, I thought I was crouched. Okay. Okay, it doesn't like it when I do that. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, what's the smart way to do this? I'm going to keep doing it this way, just... Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. We're on to something here. We're safe. I'm even crouched. Got my water sources in. You can see the suction is already starting right there. So anything that lands here will be pulled down. And I'll come across... Oops. This way. And it should fill itself in. There we go. Yep, everything is filled in. So you can see everything is being pulled down. Now, let me get out of here. Oh, you know what? I didn't think that through because now it's pulling me down. Yes. Uh, it's definitely doing this job. Man, I haven't, I haven't done this in so long. I feel like a bit of a noob here. So let's put a block down here. You know what? That's still not going to help me get out, is it? All right. Uh, there off of the magma blocks, so I'm not being pulled down. Okay, so if it's not even keeping me from jumping whatsoever, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that the spiders are going to be just fine. And let me be safe and give this one more... Ooh, this is a tough one, because if they spawn near the edge and drop here, then they might fall here and be totally safe. Uh... We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Before I actually start this farm up, I want to go ahead and show you the automatic minecart unloading system that I'm using. And yes, I did do a tutorial on this a while back, so a card to it will be popping up in the top right corner, and I'll post a link to it down in the description below. Uh, just a quick heads up, 
This was made early on in my channel, so my voice uh, doesn't sound the way it does now. It sounds a little less enthusiastic, but overall, it's still a great tutorial. It still works now in 2024. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how this works. Right now, there are a few items in here, and that's just from what I was breaking off when I was finishing the farm up. So typical minecart, hopper minecart, it comes all the way here, takes off, there's nothing there. But if we give it items to collect, so let's take this 27 cobblestone, toss it onto the farm, pretend there's spider eyes and string. That's going to get collected by the hopper minecart. And then when the hopper minecart comes back around, it will actually stop and completely unload everything before it takes off again. So we are down to eight items. And it's about to be finished. It's empty. And then it takes off and goes back out into the farm to collect any other items. So that is how this build works. And then we open up the chest here. There is the 27 cobblestone. Okay, the moment of truth. So I did go ahead and put up a little glass wall here just within their spawning area. Just in case if they get a little too close, they'll at least bounce off the wall. Hopefully, and just fall right into where they need to go. And then eventually I'll make my way down there and put in the rest of the glass. I just don't have enough on me at the moment. So let's break this. And spiders? Any spiders? Do I... Let's break this one. Make sure I don't fall into it. Hello? Spiders? Why are the spiders not spawning? <laughs> what? What is this? Hello? I am still not getting any spawns. It it can't be the one glass block, can it? What if I break this torch? Uh-oh, it was just... Really? Well, it's working. Perfect. So they're going to drop all their stuff. Huh. That's weird that the light actually affected it from back there. Because typically... Even if I had the light here, they would still at least spawn in the back corner. But, let's see. Yeah, you guys aren't going anywhere. Perfect. So the spider sees me, wants to attack. It can move. I'm still curious if it gets close enough to a wall, if it'll climb up the wall. So I'm just going to try standing right here. That should be close enough to get to me. Hey, hey you. Can you get me? I guess, even if it tries, being close to the edge as it is, it's still being kept down. Which, okay, how about you? Let's see. One more test. Can you get up that? Nope, you cannot. Okay. Good. Good, because if I couldn't, they shouldn't have been able to. That's fair. <laughs> so, okay, the farm is officially working. And then, let's see what I have just so far. 11 string. And that's all I really need. I'm not really worried about spider eyes. Because I think I actually need to damage the spiders for the spider eyes. And that's not what I really need. What I really need is string. So I can make candles. Because I have all that wax up top. And, oh no. I just thought, the bee farm, since it's right above my head, has still been running. And I also recently expanded it. So I wonder what that looks like right now. Oh yeah, it has definitely been running while I was down there because I had cleaned all the bottles out and now it looks like I have almost four full stacks of honey bottles which will make me 15 honey blocks, perfect. So like I mentioned, I did expand the bee farm and what I want to do probably next episode or maybe I'll build it in between episodes is open up a honey shop where I can sell my honeycombs. I don't think I'm going to do bottled honey, but honeycombs honeycomb blocks, and then, of course, the honey blocks themselves. So in order to keep up with that, I just need to increase my production just slightly. So these four hives here, the nest, and then the three hives to the right, are all collecting honey bottles, and then these two are shearing them for honeycombs. Just placing in the last of the tinted glass right now. And then break the torch. And there we go. Now I get to have my light. The spiders get to spawn. And then as we saw earlier, the farm is working as designed. 
Now that the spider farm is done, it's time to head back up to the top and see what Eladrium has made. I'm very excited for this, and let's see real quick before I head out how much more honey was collected. It's another 14 bottles. That's good. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, Eladrium was going to build a couple palm trees for me. And I will admit, I did get a sneak peek. So I was AFKing, and right before I logged off for the night, I just opened my door because I was going to run over to the desert temple. And then I caught a quick glimpse of the trees, and then I'm pretty sure I saw Eladrium scaffolding going up in the distance. So I kind of just walked back from the door, let it close, and then logged out for the night. So let's go ahead and take a look at this together. Ooh. Oh, those are cool. Hold on. Let's get a... Let's get some rockets here and take a look. These are huge. I know he said they were going to be a bit bigger. And he mixed leaves? <laughs> That's cool. And there's pots. I don't know what the little... No, they're not coconuts, because we're in the desert here. This is a different type of palm tree. But I know what they're supposed to be. I just don't know what they're called. Looks like we have azalea leaves. Are these... Curious. What kind of, what kind of leaves are these? Because the idea was... So when I asked Eladrium to make a couple palm trees, I wanted to use them as a reference so I can make my own across my base area. So it would help if I keep in theme with the colors that he chose. So definitely azalea leaves because I did that right over there. Oh, and I suddenly swapped that out for campfires. But what is this one? Because all the colors change. Oak. All the colors change once you put them in the desert. Okay, and put that back. The texture on this is great. I love it. And then there's a bigger one. Yeah. There's no way I could have... I wouldn't have thought of making it this way. Like I said, I made palm trees in the past. But definitely not to this scale. And not this detail. This is amazing. <laughs> so, thank you, Eladrium, if you are watching this. I really do like these. I love these, actually. The texture and the leaves. And I get it. Because they're palm trees. They're not just like regular trees to where you can kind of just bunch up a group of them like that and call it a day. But no, the palm trees, all the leaves kind of flow out. So I understand that's on a bigger scale because he did tell me it's going to be pretty big, which that's fine. This is going to be great. A great addition to the base area. So let me fly out this way and take a look around. Let's flip a U-turn here. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I do like that. And with that, I think this is a great place to end today's episode. A lot of progress was made to the base area in between episodes. I got the spider farm done, and I also increased production of my bee farm, which means I can now start producing candles. And then also, in between episodes, I'll probably build that honey shop and then get my excess honey and start selling it. So that way I can make more diamonds to fund my shenanigans. Again, thank you, Eladrium, for making these awesome palm trees. I'm really excited about these, and this is a very great addition to the base area. With that being said, everyone, this is going to be the end of today's episode. I really hope you all enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I will see you later.